I wanted to be a comedian from the age of about 13, 14, you know, um, and then I I tr- I did it two times, three times when I was 17 and one time I did it and it went really well and, the, and it was the comedy store in Sydney and I, you have to go down there and they put your name in a hat and they pull your name out and I had five minutes and it was just all about get, being in school or whatever. I can't even remember what I talked about. And um, uh, then they said, oh, you're not 18, are you? And I was like, no. And they go, you have to come back with a parent. And so I hadn't told my parents. And my parents as well, I hadn't even told them that I went into the city. Like I wasn't allowed to go into the city. You know, I lived out in the suburbs and I told them I went to a mate's house or something. So I traveled into the city. And um, uh, so so next time, my dad had to come with me. And I remember it was like bucketing down with rain. And I went out there and I got back on and the only other people in the audience because it was raining were the other comedians waiting to go on and there was the the <laughs> full range of people who were getting good at it, people who were, who were never going to get good at it and people who were their first go and people have been trying for years. And Anyway, I, got a, I couldn't have had a worse gig. I couldn't have died worse than that. And I, I got in the car with my dad afterwards and my dad said uh, – he goes, oh, you're a good kid and you've got a lot of good qualities, but uh, but this isn't for you. And <laughs> I, I, my heart sank and I, I, then I went and did it one more time just to see because that first time went so well and then I did it again and I died again and I went, all right, this isn't for me. And then I didn't go up again until I was 20. 20. I didn't do it. Yeah, and I waited another three years. I, I used to think it was more than that, but I, I was in college and I used to run my own comedy night and I remember there was a there was a, there was a, I was in Perth when I started doing that. So a lot of people think I'm from Perth because of this because I really started doing comedy in Perth. But um, I, I, the, I I the the way that a lot of people get stage time is what you do is you find a venue, put your own shows on, you book your own comedians, and that way you can MC and you can get better by you know because I, I couldn't get gigs, so I thought I'd run my own gig. And there was <laughs> there was this area in Perth called Claremont, and Claremont. Um, had a, a serial killer at the time. The Claire, <laughs> had, the, had the Claire had the Claremont killer, right? So what happened? I don't think they ever caught him. I don't know, but it, oh, maybe they did catch him. I don't know. But when I was there, the, the guy called the, the Claremont killer. And what happened was with the Claremont killer, all the all the bars that were normally this was a big party area of Perth. They were all. No one was going out because all the girls who got killed, the last thing that happened for them, they left the nightclub and got into a taxi or went looking for a taxi and then they were never seen again. So that, that nightlife there just died. So there was all these like bars that were just empty. And so I went into one like, oh, can I have a gig? You know, like that. And they were just happy to have anyone in the building. And I used to get like 15 people, me mates to come along to these shows. And it was like a really popular bar, but on a Friday night, I, I could have a gig there because of the killer. So, you know, silver lining <laughs> to what happened there. <laughs> and when you, if we go back to 17, you tried it three times maybe this isn't for me, what in your head was plan B or um, the alternative? Well, there's a weird thing that sort of, I think there's a, you know, for people who really know about me, and that's not many people, but there's there's a bit of a, a myth about me being an opera singer, um, which is, is vaguely true, right? What happened was when I was 17, I was in a school musical, and then I was doing all right. And then someone said, oh, you should get some singing lessons and blah, blah, blah. And so I got some singing lessons with this guy called Richard Gill, who has since passed. And he was one of the main conductors for the Sydney Opera. And he, he, um, he, got, me, he, he got me a part in the chorus of, uh, of uh, Wagner's The Flying Dutchman. And I had to sing in German. I was like 17 and I just sang. I just, I just bought a CD of this, this opera and I just mimicked it, you know. And I, I, I wasn't that great a singer, but after that I, 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 um, I got into uh, WAPO, which is the West Australian Academy of Performing Arts, and I studied musical theatre and then I studied opera in the next year. And so, so I, I was a professional opera singer for a few weeks of my life, but it was never, <laughs> it was never a full blown thing. But I, I did this course. It was the same course that Hugh Jackman did. And it was oh, like, okay. a, it was a full scholarship ride. And I remember, cause I, I didn't have the marks 
in school to get into anything academic in university. And I, I don't believe I had the marks to actually get into this course, but they never checked my, for my high school certificate. And I just um, went in and did a dance and singing audition and stuff. And I always still wanted to be a comic, but because I thought the comedy wouldn't work out, I, I still wanted to be an entertainer and a performer. So I thought, oh, this is another thing I can do. And it was also, I think for my mother at that stage, that was something that she was far happier to brag about that I was studying music in a prestigious college or something like that. But on maybe my second year into the course, there was a comedian called Gary who, who was like uh, this guy who'd been on Australian TV. I'm still, I still know Gary to this day. He's a very nice man. And uh, he'd come over to do a gig in Perth and I was his opening act and we had, we had a few drinks afterwards. We got along. I think he liked me more as a person than he liked me as a comic. But he said, he said do you want to come and do these, these uh, mining town gigs? And I thought, I thought, ah, oh, that's too good an opportunity. So I quit university and I went out to like places like Kalgoorlie and these little gold mining towns and I performed in these bars just to like Australian cowboys pretty much, like guys in cowboy hats that live out in the land and they work in the mines and all that type of stuff. These towns had so many men working out there and so few women that in the bars in these towns, the bartender would be a female and they'd, be, and they'd ship them in and they'd call them skimpies and a skimpy and she would just be topless. Now, the, the, but the, this wasn't, this wasn't um, a strip bar. This was just a normal bar. All the bars have topless bartenders in all these um, little country towns. And the reason for that is if you take away the topless girl behind the bar, it's a gay bar. <laughs> it's, it's just it's just it's just men so so they had to go no 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 we're not gay because they all dress like cowboys just all this thing no we're not gay there's a pair of tits over there so we're all right you know and so I did these gigs and I thought and I had I hadn't told my parents that I'd quit university I thought you know, I thought I'll just keep doing this until I can be a full-time comic. And then I think it's basically the storyline of the movie Punchline that uh, Tom Hanks character who said, uh, he said, oh, no, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a doctor. And then he, he said he'd tell his parents once he's a professional comic. But then I, I just quit uni. I went back to Sydney to my parents and said, oh, I'm going to give stand-up comedy a go. And then I think I moved to England. Oh, I moved to England then. Um, I know the day I moved to England because um, I was packing my suitcase and at about 10 o'clock at night and I was all excited. It was going to be my first time traveling overseas. I'd never been – oh, no, I'd tell a lie. I'd been to America once when I was 14. But it was my first time traveling overseas by myself without family members, yeah? And I was going on my big adventure by myself. I was getting on a plane and uh, – and uh, I was packing me bags and the, and the Twin Towers fell down. And that's when I, that's how I, <laughs> that's how yeah. I can remember the date that I left for Britain the next day, yeah. 